Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 25th of September. World leaders inaugurate solar park at UN in honor of Mahatma Gandhi. Death toll rises to 30 in Pakistan earthquake. And protesters seek probe in recent wedding bloodshed in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi remotely inaugurated a solar park, each representing a member of the multilateral body, at the UN headquarters on Tuesday to commemorate India's freedom fighter Mahatma Gandhi's 150th birth anniversary. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi along with leaders of South Korea, New Zealand, Bangladesh, Jamaica and Singapore jointly inaugurated a solar park, Peace Garden at the United Nations on Tuesday to commemorate Indian freedom fighter Mahatma Gandhi's 150th birth anniversary. The Gandhi Solar Park is the installation of solar panel on the rooftop of the UN headquarters from a grant of 1 million US dollars that India has given. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres also joined the event where a special postage stamp was also released in honor of Gandhi. Guterres also thanked India for the solar park and making a clarion call against single-use plastic. Prime Minister Modi hailed Mahatma Gandhi as one who inspires not only India but also the world. climate change or then Gandhi ji ke ye siddhant hame manavta ki raksha karne ke liye maar darsak ki tarah kaam karte hain. Mujhe biswaat hai ki Gandhi ji ka dikhaya ye rasta behtar vishwa ke nirmar mein perak siddh ho. Prime Minister Modi was later conferred the Global Goalkeeper Award by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan or Clean India campaign for his efforts to improve access to sanitation in India. Modi dedicated the award to those Indians who transformed the campaign into people's movement and accorded topmost priority to cleanliness in their day-to-day -day lives. Earlier in the day, Prime Minister Modi met US President Donald Trump on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly session in New York. During the meeting, the two leaders held discussions on combating terrorism and trade ties between India and the US. Speaking to media, Trump expressed hope that two countries will soon have a trade deal and even a larger one. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar has said that India has no problem in talking to Pakistan, but it cannot do so with Terroristan. Addressing a New York audience on Tuesday, he said that Pakistan has created an entire industry of terrorism to deal with the Kashmir issue. India's Foreign Minister Subramanyam Jay Shankar underscored that India didn't really have a problem talking to Pakistan, but certainly had a problem in restarting dialogue with Terroristan. Addressing a New York audience at cultural organization Asia Society on Tuesday, Jay Shankar said, when India decided to revoke Article 370 and bifurcate the state of Jammu and Kashmir into two union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, it drew a reaction from Pakistan and China. He said that Pakistan had created an entire industry of terrorism to deal with the Kashmir issue. They have to accept that the model which they have built for themselves no longer works. Hmm. That you cannot, uh, in this day and age, conduct policy using uh, terrorism as a legitimate instrument of statecraft. I think that's at the heart of the issue. Hmm. Uh, uh, so, I mean, we, we have no uh, problem talking to Pakistan, but we have a problem talking to terroristan. Hmm. And they have to be one and not be the other. Foreign Minister Jay Shankar underlined 
that revoking Article 370 has no implications for India's external boundaries. He also linked Pakistan's angry response to the huge investments that it had made to support terror and attempt to destabilize its neighbor. Pakistan downgraded diplomatic relations with India and also expelled Indian High Commissioner after New Delhi revoked Jammu and Kashmir's special status. Death toll from Tuesday's earthquake in Pakistan rose to at least 30 on Wednesday. The natural disaster of 5.8 magnitude damaged several buildings in Pakistan-administered Kashmir and northern parts of Pakistan. The death toll in Tuesday's earthquake in Pakistan-administered Kashmir and northern parts of Pakistan rose to at least 30, with more than 450 injured, local media reported on Wednesday. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the epicenter of the 5.8 magnitude quake was near Mirpur city in Pakistan-administered Kashmir, roughly 12 miles north of Jhelum River in Punjab province. Roads near Mirpur were completely destroyed and vehicles overturned by tremors on Tuesday, while bridges, mobile phone towers and electricity poles were also badly damaged in other areas. Tremors of the quake were also felt as far as neighbouring India, but there was no report of any loss of life or property due to the earthquake. During an event in Geneva, experts on Tuesday expressed concerns over terror financing by state and non-state actors in South Asia, especially by Pakistan. Despite international pressure, Pakistan has continued to shelter a globally designated terrorist organization on its soil. Experts on Tuesday expressed concerns over terror financing by state and non-state actors in South Asia, especially by Pakistan and its global consequences. Speaking at a seminar titled Terrorism Financing in South Asia in Geneva, the panelists discussed how money is flowing from South Asia, particularly from Pakistan to Europe, and then being used for terrorist activities. Pakistan, which is already in Financial Action Task Force or FATF's grey list, has been given a final deadline till October to save itself from being pushed into its blacklist, which can prove disastrous for the country's crippling economic condition. Um, there's a list of terrorist actors on Pakistani territory who really do need to be either prosecuted properly in Pakistan or sent to India uh, for, for trial and um, that can't come soon enough really that really is a I think a, a basic point for countries dealing with Pakistan in the international arena and indeed for the big NGOs like the United Nations we, we do need action now. Afghan Taliban are doing the bidding of Pakistan they may have some national aspirations too but uh, without the Afghan Taliban Pakistan would not be able to put the kind of pressure that it wants to put on Afghanistan and through Afghanistan also on India and then use that as a bargaining chip uh, with the rest of the world, especially the Western countries and the US. Despite international condemnation and pressure, Pakistan continues to give shelter to internationally recognized terrorist organizations like lashkar e taiba and jaish e Mohammed on its soil. India, Afghanistan and the United States have long accused that Pakistan harbors terrorists to use them as proxy to mount cross-border attacks. Moving on, University students in Gilgit, Baltistan have continued protest over the recent hike in their fees by up to 50%. They blame it as a conspiracy by Islamabad to deprive the students in the illegally occupied region from getting higher education. Scores of students have continued their protests over the sudden fee hike by the Karakoram International University established by the Pakistani government in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan. The students have held several demonstrations, sometimes in front of the university's administrative block or on the road outside, to highlight their plight since last month. But the authorities have turned a deaf ear to them. The protesters blame the university authorities increase the fees by up to 50% without any prior notice and it has now become difficult for students from middle class and poor families to afford such hefty amount. احتجاج کا مین جو ریزن یہ ہے کہ یہاں فیسوں پہ ناجائز اضافہ ہوا ہے جس کی وجہ سے کئی ادھر ہر طبقے کے طلبہ ہیں ان کو مشکلات سے سامنا کرنا پڑ رہا ہے اس ملک کے اندر اس خطے کے اندر اس علاقے کے اندر ایک بدترین کیپٹلسٹ سسٹم ہم پہ مسلط ہے جہاں تعلیم 
एक हक के बजाय तालीम को एक तजारत बनाया गया है कारोबार बनाया गया है the students expressed there are not enough sources of income for people in the region and demanded that the decision should be reverted immediately some of them even described it as a conspiracy by pakistan to deprive the students in gilgit baltistan from getting higher education to keep the illegally occupied region backward scores of people held a protest in afghanistan's helmand province on tuesday over the deaths of at least 40 wedding party guests who were caught in the crossfire of a clash between government forces and islamist militants the protesters demanded an investigation into the incident and justice for the victims hundreds of afghans marched on tuesday in a protest against the deaths of at least 40 wedding party guests who were caught in the crossfire of a clash between government forces and islamist militants in southern helmand province the marchers demanded an investigation into the deaths and justice for the victims the wedding deaths occurred days after a us drone strike killed 32 pine nut harvesters but which officials said was aimed at militants tera shpa pa musakala ke chalwesh ka sa da wata par motoran bombar uso cha awaz porta na kai na yo kharije na yo bolcha no zmuj wolosuna ta nor ta gham aw da de aw sila nor khatma sa da dui ra wateli According to officials members of the wedding party were caught in the crossfire of explosions and bullets on September 22nd during a US backed Afghan government force raid on a nearby Islamist hideout The incident came a day after President Ashraf Ghani called for extra caution in military operations and ordered investigations He had also promised measures to reduce civilian casualties Scores of cyclists took part in a mountain biking race held recently in India's mountainous desert region of Ladakh. The event aimed to create awareness among people about the benefits of cycling. Cyclists and sports lovers recently gathered in Leh town in the Himalayan region of Ladakh to take part in a mountain biking race organized to create awareness among people about the benefits of cycling. Mountain biking is one of the toughest sports in terms of endurance and skill and requires a lot of mental and physical strength as well as training. The third edition of the Northwest Challenge saw participants from Leh nearby areas and two international athletes apart from school students showcase their cycling skills. The third edition of uh, Cyclothon which is Northwest happening in Leh. I am very proud and happy that uh, this third edition is coming out very nice. The first stage yesterday went very good which was in the village of Spituk and uh, uh, Palam. Uh, I will be very very happy if this edition this cycling competition continues forever in Ladakh so that we bring more awareness in the public to cycle. The racing me bahut khush hai kyunki हमने पहले भी पहले कभी रेसिंग नहीं किया आज पहली बार अपॉर्चुनिटी मिला है तो हम रेसिंग करेंगे द माउंटेन इज डेज एड रीजन ऑफ लद्दाख इज ऑल्सो अ पॉपुलर डेस्टिनेशन फॉर टूरिस्ट फॉर थ्रीलिंग एडवेंचर स्पोर्ट्स लाइक रिवर राफ्टिंग रिवर क्रॉसिंग एंड ट्रैकिंग इट इज ऑल्सो होम टू इन दस रिवर राफ्टिंग द हाइस्ट रिवर राफ्टिंग पॉइंट इन द वर्ल्ड एंड न्यूमरस हिमालयन ट्रैक्स Well that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again World leaders inaugurate solar park at UN in honor of Mahatma Gandhi Death toll rises to 30 in Pakistan earthquake And protesters seek probe in recent wedding bloodshed in Afghanistan Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.